what's up everybody? This is Wallace from A3 Academy and today we're going to be talking about the boiling point elevation. Um, this is going to be covering where you find boiling point elevation, how it occurs, and how to calculate it. But before we even think about starting this presentation, I'm going to first recommend that you have watched our podcast on freezing point depression. This has got all your information on the Van Hoff factor and some stuff on colligative properties, so you might want to watch that first, uh, brush up on your freezing point depression information, then come back here if you've already seen it. Good for you. Let's keep going. So to start off, what is boiling point elevation? It is when the boiling point of a solution increases, keyword increases, when solute is added. So. So when you add solute into a solution, the boiling point of the solution will always increase. And so this is because uh, when you add more solute to a solution, several things happen. So the first thing that happens is there's less water molecules in the vapor. And this automatically causes the vapor pressure to decrease. And since the vapor pressure is now decreased, the boiling point is increased because the lower the vapor pressure, the higher the boiling point. So now right now you might be thinking, uh, how much? Uh, how much does the boiling point actually go up when you put solute into it? Well, it's actually a pretty complicated formula unless you consider the fact that uh, no solution is an ideal solution. Um, all solutions kind of come close to an ideal solution, but the truth is uh, no, no solution is an ideal solution, but we treat them that way because they're a lot easier to calculate uh, things like boiling point elevation freezing point depression, all these different colligative properties, if we consider that all solutions are ideal solutions, but they're not. Just keep that in mind. And if we consider that all solutions are ideal solutions, we get this equation right here. Uh, and this equation is what tells us the boiling point elevation. So delta T sub B is the boiling point elevation in degrees Celsius. So that's just the amount that the boiling point will increase. Then we have K sub B which is the ebullioscopic constant in kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. And since that word is insane, I'm just going to call it the BPE constant, or boiling point elevation constant. And it's measured in kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. And you can calculate the BPE constant with a similar formula to the cryoscopic constant in freezing point depression. Uh, you start out with R, the ideal gas constant. We talked about this in the ideal gas law uh, video. And then we multiply that by the molar mass of the solvent and then we multiply that by the square of the normal boiling point boiling point remember we then we divide all of that by the molar enthalpy of vaporization the molar enthalpy of vaporization is measured in joules per mole and it is the amount of joules that need to evaporate one mole of the solvent in normal conditions. So for example, water, which is the universal solvent, if we were to use this formula to calculate the BPE constant for water, we would start it with R, which is 8.314 joules per moles Kelvin. That's the one of the values for the ideal gas constant. We multiply that by 18 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of water. We multiply that by the square of the normal boiling point of regular water, which is 373 Kelvin. We divide all of that by 40,680 joules per mole, and that is the molar enthalpy of vaporization for water, and that's a known constant. And when you evaluate this expression, that's equal to 512 grams Kelvin per mole, which is equal to 0.512 kilograms times degrees Celsius per mole. And you should remember that. That's the BPE constant for water. That is something that you should memorize. 0.512 kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. So that is the BPE constant. Next we have the molality. Uh, we talked about molality in a previous podcast on measuring solute concentrations. It's measured in moles per kilogram as in uh, the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent. So that's the molality. Then we multiply that by the Van Hoff factor and the Van Hoff factor is just a measure of particle dissociation in the solution. But you already know that because you watched our freezing point depression podcast. So now that we know the values of all of these for the different constants, uh, we can put this to use and we can do a problem. So 10 moles of NaCl is put into 10 kilograms of water. 
what is the boiling point of this new solution? We All we have to do is use our equation. So we had our equation here. Delta T sub B is our boiling point elevation. Uh, K sub B is our BPE constant of water, which as we memorized is 0 0.512 kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. Next we have the molality of NaCl, which is our solute, that's 10 moles per 10 kilograms, which is 1 mole per kilogram. Then we have the Van Hoff factor of NaCl, which is 2. And all we have to do is multiply these three values together, and we get 1.02 degrees Celsius, which is our boiling point elevation. So all we have to do is multiply these three values together, and we get 1.02 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point elevation. But that's not the answer. We want the final boiling point. So we had our original boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. We add our boiling point elevation, which is 1.02 degrees Celsius. And our final boiling point will be 101.2 degrees Celsius, which is our boiling point when we put 10 moles of NaCl into 10 kilograms of water. Now, take a look at the equation. All we need to know about the solute is the amount that's present, which means that delta T sub B, or boiling point elevation, is a colligative property. So, that's all you need to know about boiling point elevation, uh, and that's pretty much all for today. I'm Wallace from A3 Academy, signing out, and as always, the more you know, the better you are.